Hello Internet, I'm called Matt, and I really wanted to get that 2019 video out faster than I did, because I, I knew I was going to be busy in, like, the middle of January, and I knew it was going to be busy at the end of February, but I'm like, I got a few weeks here, I can crank this video out real fast, and then I got a cold and lost my voice for a week. Isn't that just the way it always goes? Anyways, I'm moving out soon, so I'm spending a lot of time packing and unpacking, so um, I wanted to do something that I could get done real quick. So it's time for another recommendations video, but this time it's special. This time I'm not just picking some small subgenre and looking at some great movies from it. Instead, I'm looking at the very broad genre of action, but I'm picking one action movie from every country that I know of a good action movie from. We're gonna go on an action movie world tour, and I'm gonna start us way over in the east. We're gonna start in the country of Japan, which certainly has lots of great, underseen, underrated action movies I could talk about, but the one I'm gonna talk to you about today is Beat Takeshi's Hanabi, or Fireworks. Uh, it's gone under both names, um, Hanabi being the Japanese name, just Hanabi is the Japanese word for fireworks. Although I do think the uh, original Hanabi title is slightly more meaningful from what I've heard. Hanabi means fire flower, not fireworks. And fire flower has a lot more meaning in the context of the film. But irrelevant. It's gone by both titles. This is almost a weird pick to start on because a lot of these are just dumb, fun action movies. And Hanabi is like a really well-made emotional movie, so it feels a little out of place with maybe some of the other films on this list. But I couldn't not recommend it. It's such a great film. It's sort of like a film written by Tarantino and then directed by Mikhail Haneke. It's very reminiscent of Haneke's style, very static, very quiet, very understated. Uh, punctuated with these moments of extreme violence. But at the same time, it's very Tarantino-esque. It's an Eastern-inspired... I mean, it is Eastern cinema, but it's an Eastern cinema-inspired action-revenge movie. A, a very simple story, but very excellently executed here by Mr. Takeshi Kitano. Kitano, probably best known for uh, Battle Royale... Great movie if you haven't seen it. Uh, also directed another film called Violent Cop that I really like. Both of those are very fun action movies. Uh, not as great, not as well made as Hanabi. This is going to be one of the best movies I recommend today. Uh, it is a bit hard to get a hold of in the United States. I have a copy of it, which I don't have on me because I, I packed up all my DVDs before I shot this. Genius, I know. There is a U.S. release of it, I just don't know how common it is. I don't think it's on, like, Amazon or iTunes or anything, but it's out there if you look for it. Moving westward, let's talk about Korea, a country where people have been talking about the movies from it. I don't know how to structure that sentence correctly. A country... A, a country that... People have been talking about movies from that country. A movie which people have been talking about the movies from. Parasite, as you might remember, just won Best Picture. The first foreign film to ever win Best Picture. And it sparked quite an interest in uh, Korean films. Uh, a lot of people are quick to point out uh, Old Boy and the two films that are sort of in a series with it. Uh, Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance and Lady Vengeance. And I can certainly recommend... Uh, Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance and Old Boy. Have not seen Lady Vengeance. It's on my watch list. I'll get to it. But uh, the South Korean movie I want to recommend to you today is The Good, the Bad, and the Weird. Which uh, actually is Korea's, like, most expensive action movie ever made. So if you live in Korea, this might be a big movie where you live. But here in the States, it's not super well known. The Good, the Bad, and the Weird, obviously a titular reference to The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, and the film does pull a lot from uh, not just good, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, but 
all of the films of Sergei Leone's. Um, Once Upon a Time in America, the whole Fistful of Dollars trilogy, even uh, Duck You Sucker, which is not as popular a film, it has the references in there. It's weird because it's it's Eastern cinema, but it's a Western. This is set in late 19th, early 20th century Korea. It's just been discovered that there's this secret Korean treasure somewhere in China. And these three Korean gentlemen are going after it, trying to uh, get the treasure. Uh, one f just for themselves, one uh, for like a gang, and one for the Korean government. And much like The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, they all sort of work together, but they also all sort of turn on each other. I don't know, it's just wild, fun as all hell, the action is great, uh, there's some great references if you're familiar with the works of Sergei Leone. Uh, it even stars Kang Ho Song of Parasite, who's in like, every fucking Korean movie, or at least every Korean movie that gets popular in America. Uh, one thing I really complimented the first time I watched this is just like, the character and costume designs. Like, just looking at the poster, I can tell which one of these characters is the good, which one's the bad, and which one's the weird. Uh, so, moderately popular Korean movie. I personally really enjoy it. If you haven't seen it, definitely, definitely worth checking out. I do this thing where I wave my hand, and it looks fine now, but I know in the editing process, I'm gonna be fucking up the green screen hard because I keep fucking moving my hands around. Why am I like this? Moving right along to China, a country much like Japan that has given us quite a lot of great action movies to work with. You might remember from my action comedy recommendations, I recommended uh, Police Story from uh, Jackie Chan. A lot of great action movies from China I could recommend, but I am going to recommend a film called Five Fingers of Death, also called Hands of Death, although that might just be a translation thing, like their word for hand is just five fingers. Whichever way it is, I, I think Five Fingers of Death sounds a lot cooler than Hands of Death. Uh, the film has a pretty standard plot for a kung fu movie. A lot of kung fu movies are just, there's a big kung fu tournament and this guy wants to win, but it, it does have a special twist to it in that he has a special super deadly move where he can kill people with karate, and that causes issues for him. It's just such a fun little kung fu movie. How could you possibly not like it? I mentioned Hanabi seeming uh, very similar to a Tarantino film, but this is a film that clearly inspired Tarantino. I think he's even mentioned this as, like, one of his favorite movies of all time. And uh, you can certainly see its influence in films like Kill Bill. You know that part in Kill Bill where it like zooms in on her face right before she's about to kill someone and it's like boop, 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 boop. Yeah, that's from this movie. They, they do that in this movie. I, I think this is public domain. Do not hold me to that. It might not be. But I'm pretty sure it's public domain. If you haven't seen Five Fingers of Death, uh, please do. Highly recommended, uh, both by me and by a lot of other great directors. Uh, it's one of the most classic kung fu movies of all time. So, great film. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend it if it weren't. Moving right along to the land of the Thai, Thailand, where we'll be talking about Born to Fight. If you keep up with foreign cinema, especially foreign action cinema, you might be familiar with Ong Bak, the Thai warrior. Uh, probably the most popular Thailandish movie. Thailandish? Thai? Is it just Thai? Ong Bak, the Thai warrior. Probably the most popular Thai movie. I don't know that I could name any other Thai movies. Except Born to Fight, which is from the same people that made Ong Bak, the Thai warrior. And in my opinion... It's the better of the two movies. Ong Bak is another one of those very typical kung fu movies. Not that it's bad, I, I definitely enjoy Ong Bak. But, uh, of the two, Born to Fight is just a lot faster paced and a lot more fun. It's like the old school kung fu movies meets, like, True Lies? 
The, the reason True Lies is the movie I want to compare this to is that uh, the villains are terrorists who have a missile. Uh, and they sort of invade this small Thai town. And so uh, the main character and a lot of other people have to fight back using Kung Fu uh, against like this terrorist organization with all these guns and nukes and stuff. So clearly they, uh, they don't have the advantage here, but uh, they still manage to kick some ass and it's so great. So uh, if you like Dong Bok, Born to Fight, great movie. Um, if you've never seen Ong Bak, might be worth checking out. I'd check out Born to Fight first. Um, but, you know, both great movies, both very enjoyable, both come highly recommended by me. Moving right along, The Country of India. Goddamn fucking Bollywood. I don't like Bollywood movies. I'm just gonna straight up admit that. I don't like Bollywood movies. But there is one Bollywood movie I will make an exception for, and even that one has some asterisks next to it. That movie is Singham. Singham is like... Bollywood Black Dynamite? Like he's this uber macho character who's gonna beat the shit out of everyone, and it's... It's clearly unrealistic. It's, it's supposed to be unrealistic. It's... Like, funny how comedically badass this character is. The film is a bit on the long side. I think it's over two hours. But you can shorten it a lot by skipping every single song in this movie. I don't get it, India. Why are all of your movies musicals? None of the musical numbers add anything to this movie. Actually, I'm going to take that back. There's one. There's one song you need to listen to. It's Singham's theme song. They sing it right at the beginning. It, it's so good. It just establishes how amazing and badass Singham is. I also kind of have a problem with the ending. Uh, I won't spoil anything, but let's just say severe police overreach. Which, I, I mean... To some degree, that's typical of action movies. Like, ever since Dirty Harry, it's been police breaking the rules when police absolutely should not break the fucking rules. But in Singham, it goes to, like, another level. And maybe that's supposed to be satire. Like, this is so out of line for any police officer. That that's like the joke, or maybe it's a cultural thing. Maybe police can just do that in India. Not that I'm saying they couldn't in America. They probably could, but no spoilers. The minor problems I have with this film aside, it's just great fun, badass action front to back, um, very funny. There's a lot of good dialogue in this movie, which is weird, because it's not dialogue in English. I had to read it from the subtitles, and it was still funny. It's still really clever. <laughs> like, there are a lot of cultural differences between, like, <laughs> American films and Bollywood films. Honestly, between most countries' films and Bollywood films... But the humor lands. The humor made it through the translation and is still really funny. Even disregarding the really funny action scenes. There are seemingly multiple movies called Singham. Some of which are sequels and some of which are not. Uh, I have not seen any of the sequels, but be aware the one I'm talking about is a film from 2011. So, yes... Coming from someone who does not like Bollywood films, Singham is where it's at. With that, we have now moved westward enough that we're going to talk about Europe, starting in Italy. Italy, of course, very well known for their horror scene, not super well known for any action movies, so I'm going to talk about one of the most obscure movies I have ever seen, but it's a great one. Uh, live like a cop, die like a man. This is from Ruggiero Diodato, best known for Cannibal Holocaust. <laughs> but, uh, 
Live Like a Cop, Die Like a Man. Much better movie than Cannibal Holocaust. Not nearly as controversial. Uh, the action is great. The acting is great. The two lead actors have a lot of chemistry. Um, weirdly homoerotic. But not in the way action movies usually are. Like, usually action movies have this emphasis on, like, Ooh, I'm a big strong man. Look at my muscles while I got my shirt off. But this is, like, romantic? Homoromantic? Like, the lead characters ride around on a motorcycle together. Like, like hugging each other as they ride this motorcycle. I don't know, maybe that's less weird in Italy, but to an American, it, it seems a lot like a romantic movie until they start shooting people. It's got a much different dynamic than most buddy cop movies, because buddy cops, it's usually, like, the straight-edge guy, and then, like, the fun-loving, I'm-a-break-the-rules type guy. Uh, but in this one, they're both crazy loose cannons. They just kill everyone together. Which, allow me to reiterate, in real life, cops should not just go around killing people, but in movies, it's really fun to see. And there, there is a genuine mystery to this film. It's not just shooting people and then getting touchy-feely on a motorcycle. Very intriguing. Very fun to watch. Uh, it's kind of your standard 70s cop movie. Um, uh, barring a few things I've already mentioned. So, uh, you know, if you're into, like, Dirty Harry, The French Connection, and all that. Great movie. Great movie. Live like a cop, die like a man. Comes highly recommended by me. Good luck fucking finding it. It took me forever to find it. Yes, kind of an obscure movie. So allow me to move to Germany to talk about a much less obscure movie, Run Lola Run. Run Lola Run is my favorite video game movie. It's not based on a video game, it's... But it's, it's more of a video game movie than any video game movie that's ever been made. Uh, it follows this girl, Lola, who's... A uh, boyfriend is in trouble, he needs some money, or he's gonna, like, get killed by the mob. And so she's racing against the clock to try to get to him and get this money to him. Along the way, she encounters several people, and the movie stops to sort of show us what happened to them after she encountered them. And there's this weird thing the movie does, and I don't know if this is a spoiler or not, because it kind of took me back. The first time I saw it, but to, to me it's what makes the movie interesting. Um, about 20, maybe 30 minutes into the movie, she uh, gets to her boyfriend to get him the money, and she fails. She doesn't get the money to him. And then it starts over. She, she goes back to the beginning and does the mission again. That's why I say this is a video game movie. It is very clearly inspired by video games. Especially because there's not really that, like, moment before the climax where everything seems down. It's just, like, constant rising action. And then it resets and has more rising action. Like, you got an extra life so you get to try again. And there's no explanation in the movie for why this happens. It just happens. Uh, and... <laughs> I, I kind of like that. I like that they didn't explain why she gets to start over. That's just how the movie is. It's part of the movie. It reminds me a lot of the Crank movies, particularly Crank High Voltage. And I, I would be shocked to learn Neville Dean and Taylor were not inspired by Run Lola Run when they were making the Crank movies. It's like high energy the whole movie. Just going and going and going and there's all these crazy side things and it's so much fun. It's one of the most fun movies you could possibly watch. I think Edgar Wright also said he was very inspired by this movie and I can see that too. It's got a very Edgar Wright sense of style to it. Excuse me. I still got the cough that killed my voice. Please excuse my cough drop. Next, we're going to go to France, a country you might not associate with action movies, um, unless you're, like, familiar with the films of Luc Besson. But um, I would rather talk to you about the film Point Blank. The movie I'm talking about is Point Blank from 2010. Not to be confused with 
point blank from 1967, point blank from 1998, or point blank from 2019. Why are there so many fucking movies called point blank? I didn't even mention gross point blank. That's a great movie, by the way. I mentioned it in my action movie recommendations. Anyways, Point Blank is a French film about uh, a doctor who gets caught up in this, uh, like, gang war after he rescues, like, a mob boss who's, uh, like, the, the mob then kidnaps his wife and makes him help the boss escape the hospital he's in. Uh, reminds me a bit of, uh, Collateral, not just in the story of, like, you know, uh, innocent guy in the wrong place at the wrong time, but also aesthetically it looks a lot like, uh, Collateral. Just the, the places they go seem very similar, even though Collateral was filmed here in America and this was filmed in France. Uh, the action is all really well shot, really enjoyable. Kind of a fun movie, it is a bit dark. If you're into, like, crime films, this is a great crime film. Uh, although it does have a bit more action than maybe a lot of crime movies do. Uh, I don't know what else to say, really. It's pretty straightforward. Just a, a guy helping this group of thieves rescue their boss from a hospital. And, you know, shit goes down. There's a lot of violence, a lot of gun shootouts. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Next, we've got Britain and the film Attack the Block, which is kind of a horror movie. But it's it's an action horror movie. It's listed on IMDb as action. We'll count it. It's an action movie. Here's the thing. If I did, like, a horror movie world tour, which I'm definitely considering doing, Britain's got a lot of great underrated horror. Um, but as far as action movies that go, all they've really got is James Bond and Edgar Wright movies, which Attack the Block kind of is... It was produced by Edgar Wright for uh, his friend and frequent collaborator Joe Cornish, uh, who wrote and directed this movie. So if you're an Edgar Wright fan, Attack the Block, it, it's got his sense of humor. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of the foreshadowing or the style you've come to expect from a lot of Edgar Wright's movies. But, you know, it's like very comedic in the same way an Edgar Wright film is. Uh, the film is about a bunch of, like... Poor teenagers who live in sort of this bad part of town. Uh, when an alien crash lands on Earth. Or a, a species of aliens, excuse me. A species of aliens crash lands on Earth and they have to fight those creatures off. The creature effects are really good. Despite having a low budget, they actually used practical effects. And so I, I gotta give them a lot of credit for that. And from what I've read, they had two suits for these monsters, and they fucking destroyed one of them. It is pretty evident that they only had two costumes, because there's almost always just two of them attacking. Um, uh, later in the film, there are a few more together, so some of them are CG. But most of the early encounters with them, it's just two of the creatures, so you can kind of tell they didn't have that many creature suits. But again, really good effects, uh, very well done, very well designed. I love the character designs of the monsters. And yes, of course, there's the action. Very fun, very action-packed movie. Uh, if you haven't seen it, if you like, you know, Edgar Wright's style, if you like invasion movies... It's a fun movie, it's funny, a lot of great action, I really enjoy it. Highly recommending Attack the Block. Because it's doing a lot better than Ireland, because the movie I'm gonna recommend from Ireland is Fatal Deviation. Fatal Deviation is not a good movie, let me be clear about that up front. Fatal Deviation is a hilarious movie. It's like the first Irish kung fu movie. Because that's something we needed. Actually, I take it back. That's something we needed. It's so bad. It's so funny. Uh, it's a very weird film. Honestly, I, I just need to review this. I need to review Fatal Deviation. 
someone make a note. Make me f- force me to review Fatal Deviation. It's it's on the list. So good. So good. Uh, I do have one last movie to mention, stateside, but I will give just a, a few quick mentions real quick just to hit a few other countries. Um, to start with, I want to mention El Mariachi from Mexico. Um, the first film of Robert Rodriguez. Very well shot, especially for how low budget it was. Like, I review a lot of low budget movies on my show and sometimes I'm like, maybe this is unfair, they didn't have a lot to work with, but El Mariachi didn't have a lot to work with, and it's still great. So, El Mariachi from Mexico. Also gonna recommend uh, The Raid Redemption and The Raid 2 from Indonesia. Probably you've heard of those movies. Very popular, especially among the action movie crowd. But, yeah, the action's so fucking good in those movies, like... I love them. I love the Raid Redemption and the Raid 2. Definitely check them out. Weird to me that the first one is called Raid Redemption. Redemption sounds like a sequel title. Uh, from the country of Australia, I'm gonna recommend Upgrade. Probably could have mentioned Mad Max here, but you know about Mad Max. If you haven't seen Mad Max, that's your fault. Uh, Upgrade from 2018? 2019? Pretty recent. Um... The story I was having some issue with up to the first fight scene. And the fight scene is fucking amazing. And then from there, the story is really fucking good. So it it takes a little to get into, but I really enjoy it. If you didn't catch Upgrade when it was out, definitely worth a recommendation. Uh, From Brazil, I'm gonna mention City of God. A uh, very well-known crime film. Very clearly Tarantino-inspired. This is a crime movie. I don't know how much crime movies count as action movies. Because there are, like, action crime movies. And then there's just regular crime movies. I think this has enough action in it to count. Maybe. I don't know. I kind of think of action as just, like kicking down the door and shooting shit, whereas City of God's a little more than that. Whatever, whichever way it is. If you haven't seen City of God, watch City of God. And finally, just so I can say I recommended a single African movie in this video, of course I'm gonna recommend Who Killed Captain Alex from Uganda. A lot of people sort of treat this as like a hilariously bad movie uh, in, in, like, the vein of, like, The Room or Birdemic. And, like, I get it. It is a very goofy, very silly film. But I I, I don't look at it that way. I, I feel like my attachment to this film is very genuine because it feels like I'm laughing with the creators and not at them. Like, the creators intended for this to be a fun, off-the-wall, silly action movie. I I can't be like, oh, haha, they screwed up so bad. It's like, no, they knew what they were doing. They they, they were very self-aware in making this. I am laughing with them, not at them. Who Killed Captain Alex? Amazing movie. If you haven't seen it... What are you even doing? What are you even doing? Go, go watch Who Killed Captain Alex. Who Killed Captain Alex is better than anything on my channel. And the final action movie I'm going to recommend from right here in the States, I'm going to recommend The Driver. A lot of movies I could have picked, but I decided to go with The Driver. Since uh, there seemed to be an overarching theme of, like, inspired by inspiration movies... And uh, The Driver was clearly an inspiration for a lot of people. Uh, In particular, Drive and Baby Driver both stand out as films very clearly inspired by The Driver. It's one of the original, like, getaway driver movies, you know, a kid involved in a life of crime, kind of wants out of the life of crime, but you know, is is a good driver, is the best driver. 
uh, the film was not very popular when it came out, but a lot of filmmakers have pointed to it as an inspiration. Uh, on top of Edgar Wright and Nicholas Winding Refn of Driver and Baby Driver. Also, of course, Tarantino and, uh, goddamn, like, Rodriguez have all mentioned that they're f fans of the movie. I, I think the director said somewhere that, like, even though it wasn't very popular when it first came out, that, uh, hardly anyone saw the movie, but everyone who saw the movie made a movie of their own, inspired by the driver. And, uh, you know, that's pretty accurate. This was a uh, directorial effort of Walter Hill, um, who's better known for producing. He produced uh, Alien and Aliens. His directorial catalog is a lot more limited. Uh, he did direct some good stuff. He directed The Warriors, Streets of Fire I'm a big fan of. Uh, you maybe have also heard of 48 Hours and Undisputed. Both... A decent movies in their own right. Uh, film stars Ryan O'Neill as the driver. Doesn't even have a name. None of the characters have names. They all just have job titles, which feels very accurate to, like, the crime underworld. Like, I don't want to know you, you don't want to know me. Let's just do our jobs. Uh, Bruce Dern also has a role in the movie. He plays a detective looking for the driver. I mean, overall, just a really fun, really inspirational movie, clearly very influential movie, and it's just a shame that more people haven't seen it. And that's gonna conclude my action movie world tour. Uh, I, I hope you can watch some of these movies. I hope you got some good recommendations out of it. Um, what are your favorite foreign action movies? I guess I talked about an American one too. What are your favorite underrated action movies from different countries? Let me know, and I will see you all next time in a new place. I guess that doesn't matter right now, because I'm, I'm in front of a green screen, but that, this green screen could be anywhere. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in the ocean. I'm uh, in Green Hill Zone. I'm a cool cat's house. Um, I'm on a talk show. Uh, you get what you fucking deserve, Murray. Haha. <laughs> uh... I'm rambling. <laughs> it's the end of the video. Bye.